In this episode, we're going to use a couple of Newton's laws of motion to look at how a rocket produces thrust. This is brought to you by the Science of Fly. Let's get to it. To understand how a rocket is producing thrust, we're going to first look at Newton's third law of motion. This is the one that says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is the force pairs law of motion. If you push on something, it pushes back. An example of this would be if you pulled out some of those heavy engineering textbooks and set it on your dining room table, you are exposing this dining room table, this poor, poor dining room table, to the massive gravitational force acting on those books. The earth is pulling those textbooks downwards towards it. The table has to hold up the books against that force. As they sit there at rest, the weight of the textbooks is acting on the table. It's pushing down on the table and the table is pushing back. This force of the table pushing back upwards on the books is called the reaction force. It's going to push an equal size of force, but in the opposite direction. So it's going to push upwards. And this is how the table is holding up the books against the force of gravity, trying to pull those books down to earth. Let's say we're looking at a chemical rocket and we're actually burning fuel to produce thrust. What the rocket is doing as it's burning this fuel is that it is accelerating these combustion gases rearward and it forms a jet. The jet is pushing these combustion gases backwards and the gases in turn are pushing back against the rocket making it move forwards. There are some common misconceptions of pe that people have that the rocket is somehow pushing against the earth or pushing against the air and the atmosphere. Both of these are incorrect. And the reason rockets are used in space is because it doesn't need to push against the ground and it doesn't need to push against the atmosphere to produce thrust. In fact, it's actually easier to produce thrust in space or more specifically in a vacuum because it's easier to expel the gases out of the back of the rocket. And as we'll see in the general thrust equation, either in the next video or the video after, a higher exit velocity will lead to greater thrust. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to the jet that comes out the back of the rocket and try and understand this force that the rocket is creating. To do this, we're gonna look at Newton's second law of motion. This would be the F equals MA law, and it comes from the idea of conservation of momentum. Force then is defined as the change of momentum over time, with momentum being mass times velocity. For most solid objects, the mass is usually constant through the acceleration, through the motion. If it changes, it changes just so slightly that we don't even care about it. And for those cases, we take mass out of the change over time equation. And what we're left with is that force is equal to mass times the change in velocity over time, or the force is equal to mass times acceleration. When dealing with rockets, there's going to be a huge change in mass, enough that we can't ignore it. So we need to leave it in with velocity to look at how it changes over time. I went ahead and grabbed a couple of examples that deals with water jets. The first is just a typical jet that you might find in a hot tub. Now what these jets are doing is that they are taking a mass of water and they are accelerating it towards the rear. If you put your hand over one of these water jets, you can feel that the jet actually pushes your hand backwards, which is why a lot of times they're included in hot tubs. This force can have a massaging feel on your back. 
And the second example I have here is also another water jet, but this time it's for a different purpose. Now this works under the same principle where you're taking a mass of water, forcing it through this jet where it accelerates. And for this hovering example, you're pushing the jet downward to offset your weight. The force of this jet is a mechanical force. It's not due to magnetism or electricity or gravity or any of the other forces. It's a pure mechanical force. You're pushing this working fluid out of a jet and accelerating it. And the same thing is true of a rocket. For instance, for a combustion rocket, you might be burning the gases, pushing them through a nozzle with a throne in it where you're accelerating it, thereby creating this jet or backward force. And as we discussed on the previous slide, the thrust is a reaction force to this backwards jet force that we're pushing out the back of our rocket. I went ahead and put together an example that I'm hoping helps to clarify how the third law of motion and the second law of motion both explain how a rocket produces thrust. And to really give you an, a physical example of what's happening, since it can be a little hard to wrap your mind around at first. Now for this example, let's say it's Friday night and you decide, hey, what better thing to do on a Friday night than go down to my local hardware store and buy a bunch of anvils. Anvils, of course, are these very big, massive, heavy tools. So you go down to the hardware store, you load up a shopping cart full of anvils, and the lines are busy, so you decide to play around for a little bit. So you decide to go ahead and sit on the shopping cart, pick up one of the anvils, and throw it. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is totally what everyone does on Friday night. Now, what's going to happen to you? Let's take a look at it from a third law perspective and a second law perspective. From a third law perspective, we see here on the left, when I'm throwing the anvil, I am using my muscles to exert a force on the anvil. This force that I'm exerting on the anvil would be the action force. And from the third law, we know there is a reaction force equal and opposite to the force I exert with my muscles. The idea being that if I'm pushing on the anvil, the anvil is pushing on me. And since I'm sitting on this cart full of anvils, it's pushing on me and the cart and all the anvils together in the opposite direction as the force that I threw the anvil. Take a quick second to think about it. Obviously, the anvil is going to move backwards because I just threw it. But what about me sitting on top of the car? Am I going to sit still? Am I going to move? Why am I going to move? How far am I going to move? Am I going to move as far as the anvil? Am I going to move farther than the anvil? Am I just going to stay still and the anvil is going to move? To understand the motion that would happen due to these reaction forces, we actually need to separate the objects look at them individually in a free body diagram to see what all the different forces are acting on both objects. Looking at the anvil, there's a weight object that's pulling it down, but we're just going to neglect that for right now. We're not looking in that direction. We're looking at the horizontal direction. If we look at the horizontal direction, this action force that I applied to the anvil would be pushing it to the right and the only resistive force to that would be air drag, which is probably not going to be that important. So we're just going to ignore it and say that it's so small we don't care about it. To understand the acceleration of the anvil to the right, we can use the second law of motion, F equals MA, and use this net force to the right and the mass of the object and determine it's going to accelerate to the right. This is what we already knew it's pretty intuitive that if I throw it, it's going to be moving in that direction. Now, what might not be intuitive is what's going to happen to me sitting on top of this cart. We know from the third law that when I pushed on the anvil, the anvil pushed on me and the cart and everything in the cart. So what we have is this force that is pushing on us to the left. We do in real life have some forces that's going to resist this force. For instance, we're going to have friction in the bearings and wheels. Since we're talking about rockets, we're not 
really going to have these wheels and the ground and all that friction to deal with. Uh, so we'll just ignore it here in our example. So really I'm having this force that is pushing me in the cart to the left with nothing really resisting it. I mean, I got some air drag, but like we talked about before, for this instance, it's very small. Since there is a net force on me in the cart, me and the cart are going to accelerate to the left. Now, when I asked you how far I was going to go if I moved, I was really hinting at this idea that there's a difference in mass between the anvil and myself and the cart and all the other anvils I have in there to purchase. So the anvil is going to go a lot farther than I am in my cart, but I'm still going to move some. Now, what's going to happen if I pick up another anvil and throw it? The anvil is going to fly backwards and it's essentially going to be pushing me forwards a little bit at a time. Since I load it up and I've got a handful of anvils in my cart, if I pick one up and throw it, pick one up and throw it, pick one up and throw it, I can essentially start propelling myself forwards by throwing the anvils backwards, right? By forcing this mass to the rear. And this is the idea of how a rocket produces thrust. So when a rocket is burning and, ex and, and creating this jet of combustion gases, it's throwing this mass of gas backwards. Now the mass of the gas isn't very big. There's not a whole lot of mass there. But the rocket is producing thrust because it's throwing it at very high velocity backwards. And as it's burning, it's throwing more and more and more and more. So it just keeps throwing, 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 throwing this small amount of mass at high velocities rearward. And so that's creating a huge momentum, right? Momentum is mass times velocity. It's creating this huge momentum or force backwards. And due to Newton's third law, we know that there is a reaction force of the same momentum pushing the ship forward. And that is what we call thrust. Now there's something else to notice in this example. As I pick up an anvil and throw it, the mass of me plus the cart plus everything in the cart is actually decreasing as well. And we'll probably talk about that in a future video and maybe even a little bit in the, in the video where we go over the general thrust equation. Just keep that in the back of your mind. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. In the next video, we're going to look at the different types of rockets. And in the video after that, we're going to be looking at the general thrust equation. I will see you in the next video.